All right, thank you. And uh, first I wanna welcome all of you guys. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and certainly I really wanna thank everyone for hosting uh, Berlin Buzzwords and especially guys in the back helping us out, hooking everything up, so thank you. And uh, from there we'll really jump right in. Um, so my name is Michael Nilsson. I'm a software engineer uh, here at uh, Bloomberg. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Bloomberg is a, a software company uh, in the financial domain. Uh, and on top of you know, being able to, of course, do trading, uh, uh, you can also use it to analyze a lot of data. One of the things that we really focus on, Diego and I, uh, is in the search domain. And um, for search, really particularly news, which is one of the big ones, um, we've got a, a huge collection. Uh, uh, we index about 500 million stories are in there. It's really spiky. Uh, at time, we have about you know, 500 plus stories uh, per second coming in. Uh, we have some SLA constraints uh, in terms of speed, 180 millisecond uh, response time. So it's, but it's not just search. We also do alerting, uh, but really we're going to dive into the search space because you know this is what we're going to be talking about. So what have we been doing in the past few years? Um, initially, we had our own proprietary search system. Uh, we got rid of that. Uh, it was, you know, pretty much it was inflexible. It didn't scale so much. And of course, one of the things out there that really helps with this is Lucene uh, and Solar. So we actually migrated to that. Um, of course, it provides a lot of features, uh, you know, that we didn't have. Um, of course, it's open source. Uh, and one of the great things about that is that if you find something wrong with it, you can contribute back. Uh, if it doesn't have an improvement or an enhancement. You can write it up, and you know if it works out and it works for you, you have a chance of actually contributing it back. And one of the things that we did uh, is contribute the Learning to Rank plugin, which is upstream now into Apache Solar 6.4. Uh, ranking is a really big deal for us, and on top of that, we actually wanted to re-rank our results to hopefully give us more relevant results. So for those of you that don't know, Learning to Rank, uh, really it's just another way of saying uh, machine learn re-ranking. And just to kind of give you a quick overview, uh, you know, why would you want to do learning to rank? Of course, you have your search bar, you have your documents that come in, and one of the first steps that you do, uh, you kind of tune what you're going to search on. Uh, you've got your normal score, your documents come back if you search for solar here. Then you're like, oh, I want to tune the title's worth more, the descriptions may be worth more or less, and you kind of tweak that, and your results get a little bit better. And then you dive into that, you're like, oh, Maybe document length is important. Freshness, you know, how recent are these documents? Uh, you know, are these going to be published uh, today? Were they published a month ago? That, that matters. And you spend a lot of time tweaking this. Uh, you got your solar query right, but all that time you spent tuning it, maybe your Lucene query now doesn't work. You know, London query doesn't work, Bloomberg, everything. So it takes a lot of time. You have to be a domain expert to really dive into this uh, and actually get the ranking right. Um, so one of the goals with the Learning to Rank plugin essentially was to hopefully uh, optimize for relevancy of this ranking for us and really get uh, the different machine learning models uh, pluggable into the system. So if you really wanted to you know, write your own or support new models that we don't support, you, know, you can write a Java class uh, and hook it in. And on top of that, since it's actually a part of Solar, you get access to a lot of the rich features that Solar provides for feature engineering. So what we're really going to dive into here is essentially the pipeline to build out a learning to rank system and where the plugin actually fits into this. And just off the bat, the first thing you have to do is actually collect query document judgments. Uh, this is going to go into your training set. And essentially what this is, you have your query and your documents. You really need to have someone judge whether documents are good or bad. Now, that could be yes, no, thumbs up, thumbs down, good document, bad document for this query, Apple. Uh, you could use a star system. In this case, maybe Tim Cook for Apple is uh, three out of five stars. The actual ticker itself, five out of five, uh, and then others like Apple Seed, uh, not really relevant at all. Um, but it's up to you to essentially collect that data. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, you can pay judges, uh, experts, uh, to actually do this manually. You can even crowdsource this. Uh, there are other platforms out there. You can use Mechanical Turk. You can use Crowdflower. Uh, there are ways to actually you know, get this kind of curation. Uh, another way is implicitly, which you can kind of infer this through user behavior. Maybe you aggregate a bunch of result clicks. Uh, you can use a few other things like query reformulation or dwell time to kind of imply what that relevance would be for that query document pair. So now that you have a bunch of judgments for all your queries and documents that you think are important and a relevance judgment, 
you now need to extract the features for those documents. And for this same query, maybe a few of the features that you'd want to extract, uh, in this case I have, does the query match the title? That's pretty important, you know, so that's a feature that you would write. Uh, freshness, uh, how uh, recent was this document published? Today, yesterday, you know, that contributes to the score. A lot of the things that you would put into your solar query, uh, those are typically features that you'd want. In our case, since we're from Bloomberg, maybe we want our Bloomberg documents to be up there, so maybe I throw that in as a feature, and how popular are these documents? Really, this is where like the bread and butter comes in. Uh, feature engineering is really, really where a lot of the work goes in that you have to, uh, you know, really pretty much write a lot of uh, code or configuration to essentially extract this information. So in this particular case, with the plugin, uh, you would define a file, a features.json file, and this would be a sample of what that would look like in this case for you know, the features I just mentioned earlier. Did the query match the title? What's the freshness? Is it from Bloomberg or popularity? Now this JSON file uh, where you config the features, uh, essentially it's a list of these features that has a name so that way you can identify it when you're extracting the features. You specify essentially the class uh, that it's going to reference, actually the code that's going to execute. Uh, and inside the params, one of the good things about this is you can use solar queries to define your features. So in this case, for the match title, I'm using the field feature to search on the title. And then essentially whatever text is going to be passed in, I'm going to see if it matches that field. And the output's going to be uh, the score of that. And I'll use that as a feature. For freshness, I'm actually using a function query. Um, and this is, you know, the standard one that you can see on the Wikipedia page in Solar. Essentially, that's what has a, you know, a descent of, uh, how, depending on how recent the document is, you get a higher score. The older it is, the lower the score. So that's essentially the equation there. But you can use any function uh, query and define it uh, as your features, among uh, many others there. So once you've actually defined this JSON file, you would deploy it to Solar using a curl command hitting the feature store endpoint. So now your features are loaded up into Solar. And then to actually extract the features, you'd copy paste this one line, this transformer, into your Solar config. So then you have access to the transformer, which you then specify inside of the FL parameter, which is where you actually want to, which fields you want to return. In this case, we want to return a, a fake field, which is our features field. And the value is going to be the list of all the features and the feature values. It'll be the feature vector, uh, which then you can extract. And then from there, combine it together into a training set for you to train your model. Now, now you have your judgments, your list of query documents and judgment relevance. Now you have the documents and the feature vectors. Next thing you need to do is combine them into a single file, which then you feed to a ranking model. Now, there are a couple different libraries you can use to train a model. You can train rank SVM using liblinear. You can train Landmark using ranklib. Now, um, for those of you that, that don't know, uh, a model uh, is just essentially it's a function that you optimize. In this case, we want to optimize ranking uh, over a relevancy metric, so that way hopefully we get better results on top. Now, these libraries that you use, they're going to output a file, which is the definition of your model. And what you're going to have to do is essentially deploy that model to Solar, so now you can use it online at query time to re-rank your results. Now, there is a model file, similar to how you would uh, write your features file and deploy that to Solar. It would be the same process for defining that model file. You essentially would just have to transform the output of whatever library you're using into this, where you specify the class of the model, a name so you can identify it, so you can use it. And then the param section is essentially, uh, depending on which model class you're using, the definition of the model itself. In this case, since I trained my model using Lambda Mart, Lambda Mart is essentially a forest of trees, uh, in a sense. And so this is an array of trees, and then you know it just branches out. Uh, but the details essentially is just really when you train your model, it's going to output a file, and you're going to convert that file into a format like this and deploy it to Solar. Now, one of the things that we have, though, is we're going to be doing a demonstration of all of these steps uh, later on, and we have code that does all this for you. Um, so you can kind of play around with that later on. So just like I said with features, you then deploy this file to Solar. So now you can actually re-rank your results. And this is going to be online, and this is also using the plugin where you copy-paste this one line into your Solar config to get access to the Learning to Rank uh, parser plugin. And now you can actually re-rank your results using the RQ query. So whatever query you're using normally, you have your Q with your EDIS max, that's essentially going to give you your, 
you know, it's going to give you your top 10 results that you see on the first page, but it's going to score, you know, whatever thousands matched. You're going to use this to re-rank, let's say, the top 5, top 10, in this case, top 100 documents. Now, with the machine learned model, it's a bit more expensive, so you don't typically use your machine learned model to score all your documents in the collection. Uh, you only use it on the top 10, top N in this case, uh, just because it's a little bit uh, more expensive. So, kind of diving into the actual request you make, RQ equals, you have the LTR, this essentially is the name of the parser that you're going to use. This is uh, standard solar notation. In this case, LTR is just the name of the parser you're referencing which is what we named it uh, in the solar config. Uh, then the model name that you want to use, model equals, that's the name of the model that you deployed to solar. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using for re-ranking. In this case, I just called it my model name. And then re-rank docs is the number of documents you want to re-rank. This is the top K, in this case, 100 that I specified. And then EFI, this is a way for you to pass in external feature information. Uh, not all features that you're going to use uh, for training your model are going to exist inside of Solar. You might have a third party uh, system that helps you identify maybe query intent, and maybe that's important. The query that comes in, uh, did it match the title? That also kind of comes from your client. That's something you want to pass in. So this is a way for you to pass in essentially any list of key value pairs that you've defined in your feature set that it's going to use in reference. So now, that you're re-ranking your results, of course, the most important part really is, are you doing better? Uh, you need to evaluate your results. Uh, I'm not going to dive into really all the different kinds of metrics there are. Uh, this is just a very, very small subset. Many of you, I'm sure, already know. Precision, out of all the results that came back, how many are good? That's one way to figure out if things are good or bad. Recall, out of all the good documents in your whole collection, how many did you return? That's another thing you can use to gauge how good things are. F-score, it's the harmonic mean between the two, and you can kind of tune if you want to favor precision or recall. NDCG, normalized discounted cumulative gain. Uh, this essentially takes in the order of the results uh, into your ranking. Uh, so that kind of also favors things that if you push it to the top, that's good. If they don't make it all the way to the top, that's not so good. But this is not, you know, everything. There are a lot of papers out there that really dive into different metrics. Uh, you can use MRR, uh, mean average precision, ERR. There's a lot of them. A lot of these, there's papers out there. A lot of these are on Wikipedia. You can kind of implement yourself. There are libraries out there that kind of implement this for you. But really, this is essentially what you want to use to measure how good your system is before ranking, after re-ranking, uh, to really kind of gauge how things are. So from there, it's time for a demo. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Diego for us, and he's actually going to step through everything that I kind of followed, uh, except with, you know, a real, real code and real demonstration. So, good luck. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Hi. So now I'm going to do something really dangerous that you should never do in a talk, I'm going to give you a live demo of uh, the plugin. So uh, it could be that I mess up, but I'm quite confident because today I did a sacrifice. I sacrificed two laptops to the god of demo, so I hope it will be fine. Um, before I start, I just have a question for you. How many of you know, knew before what is precision recall? Can you raise your hands? Okay, half of the room. Okay, thank you. So. So I'm going to show you, you this demo because with Mike we were discussing how to do the talk and we thought that it was nice to show that it actually works. Um, so this demo will be available on the Bloomberg GitHub soon. Uh, and it will be, it's, the demo is a fork of Lucene Solar, so it will be a branch in our Lucene Solar 4. So uh, in a couple of weeks I will tweet about that. And if you go on the Bloomberg GitHub you can download the code and play with it. So, how does it work? So, first of all, so the demo will be automatic, everything will go out, but I just wanted to point out that if you want to use the plugin, the only thing that you have to do is take your solar schema and add these two lines. So, one will import the ranker, so the guy that actually do the ranking inside solar and use machine learning and allows you to plug in the, the, the learning to rank models. And, and then the features that are, so the, uh, the feature transformer that allows you to get in, in the response together with your document, the feature vector of all the features. I'm going to show you later how you use this. So the example, so first of all, a few words about the setup. Um, 
As you probably know, in Solar there are several examples that you can run and play with. One that is quite popular is Tech Products. And if you go on the Learning to Rank uh, wiki page on Solar, you will see that we provide an example on Tech Products. So you just run uh, Solar Tech Products and you get you can play with Learning to Rank. But Tech Products is really small, so you can't really see uh, how it works with a real collection. So for this demo, we decided to use uh, the simple Wikipedia JSON dump. So it's, uh, it's the dump uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, we didn't use the English one because you know, it's like four million article and it's several gigabytes one that you download it, so it was not easy to like share and, and provide. Um, what we use, it's a simple. So I don't know if you know, but there is a, a particular Wikipedia. There are multiple languages. You can see Wikipedia in Japanese, in English, but there is one that is called Simple, and it contains only the most important article explained in a simple English for people that are not really uh, yeah, proficient with English like me. Um, so it contains only 150,000 articles, so it's reasonable to, to ingest. And, uh, we converted it in JSON, so we, we use a library that parts the wiki text that it's not really an easy format to, to process in, in Solar, so it, it parses the wiki text, so like all the format that Wikipedia used to, for the articles, and it produces a JSON with nice uh, fields. And then we index into Solar. In the demo, there is a script that does this. I'm not going to show you now because I don't think it's really interesting, but there is a script that you, you download the JSON file, you run index, and it's done. And, um, and then I changed the, the, I provide a schema for, for this, um, for the Wikipedia articles that contains all the fields that you will see usually in Wikipedia. And then there is a copy field text. So when you run a query, you, by default, you eat text. And this copy field contains all the textual field of, Wikipedia, of the article in Wikipedia. So, oh, okay, so now we can start actually doing things. So I hope everything will work. Let me go. Yeah, so first thing is just query the collection. So if I go on Safari, yeah, so here you see I'm just querying for all the documents. And so this is good so that I can show you that the size of the collection is really 150,000 documents. And here I'm just getting random document. And now I get chloric acid as first one. And you can see the schema, we have like many things. So we have the title, we have things that I highlighted in the page, we have the paragraph that is a list of strings, uh, one element for each paragraph. We have, if there is a list in the article, we have a list. We have the section, the title, ID, and so on. So this is our uh, typical document in the collection. So then what I can do now, uh, I can try a query. So a standard query, Berlin. Uh, so here I'm just using the default ranking of Solar, the one that you get when you install it for the first time, and at the moment in Solar 6 it's BN25. Um, so yeah, this is the result, I got 1,000 results back, and the first one with score 10.66 is East Berlin. Uh, that could be fine, I could say that I'm happy if I see East Berlin looking for Berlin, but maybe we can do better in this demo. So. We, so Mike, before I show you all the steps, so I'm gonna go through all the steps when you train a model and show you. So the first thing is, oh, run the demo. Uh, I, I'm cheating, I already run this, so I will skip this. So it's just running demo, it will open a, um, a web page. And, um, and the first thing that we want to see is um, annotate a collection, so we want to create our train set, we want to have some queries and say which documents were relevant or not for, for the query. So this is what the demo mainly provides. Uh, so I wrote this small prototype uh, using Flask in Python. And so here on the left, I have a bunch of queries. And for each query, I have all the Wikipedia pages that the default uh, ranking in Solar returned me. And then I can mark the results relevant or not. Uh, I was choosing the queries, so I chose query on which I felt confident that I knew what was relevant or not. There could be that there is something wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can see here in green, things are relevant, in red, things that are not relevant. So I can show you uh, Trump. Uh, actually, I could say like Donald Trump, it's relevant. So I click and I put it relevant. Uh, yeah, these are things that I know. So Italian dishes, Steve Jobs, London, 
uh, flutes, I like to play the flute, uh, learn Python, and, and so on, okay? So I have a bunch of queries, not really much. Usually you want to have around 1,000 queries when you do a training set or more. So the more you put, the more, the better it is, okay? So yeah, I want to have holidays at Elba, Iceland this year. Um, so, there, so now I have a, a training set. So I have a, a set of queries and, uh, and judgments, and I want to train a model from this. So what do you do if you train a model? What you need is to have the relevance, and then for each document, you want to produce a list of features. So what is a feature? Again, Mike was talking about that before. Uh, a feature in our plugin is just a JSON snippet. And one feature that is particularly interesting here is the freshness uh, that tells us how, when the document was created, actually. So the, it's a score that we want to give to fresh documents to uh, boost them, because usually uh, if something was created recently, it, it could be that it's relevant. And so you can look this in the uh, Solar Wiki. It's, it's explained. It's a, this is a standard function query that you use when you want to boost freshness. And we are just reusing the solar code. We, we don't have to write code to implement this. And so all the feature that, all the queries that you can do in solar, you can do it. And the, the score that you get from solar out of the query will be the value of the feature. And so you, you create this JSON file, and then you just send it to solar through a put request, and solar will keep it in its schema. And you can actually browse it from solar. I should have it open. Yeah, so this is inside solar. You can, I can show you. So if, I, if you go on, on Solar at this path, you, you will see the, the feature specification file. So as you can see, I have uh, the original score given by, that, by the default ranking formula of Solar. Then I have a feature that tells me the length of the title. Because like if you have a, an article that has a really long title, it could be that it's not what you really want to see. You want to see short things that are probably good articles. And, um, and so on, the score just if I eat on the title, uh, the score if I just eat on the sections, and so on. And then I have freshness again. Can you see it? Sorry about that. OK. Um, OK, so another thing that is interesting is that some feature like this will tell you the score of the query if I match the query only on the list field in, in the article. And you can see, I don't know in advance what will be the query. So in order to plug the query at runtime, we use this special syntax with the dollar. So this means that at runtime in the query, you will pass a special field called if fi, and we'll put the query, and then the query will be replaced uh, there at runtime, and you will get a good value. So let's see this in action. So if I want to retrieve now the, the feature for my query Berlin, I will just add, ask for this special field. So, feature, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Please, tell me if you can see. Uh, so, I will, I'm just asking for a particular field, features, and I, of course, I'm passing the query, Berlin. So, as you can see, I will get the normal fields, the title, the score of Solar, and then I start, I get a string that contains all the feature. So, I get the original score, blah, 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 all in one string. So I can use this to query Solar and create a training file to train my model. So let me show you an example of training file now. OK, this is a raw training file. So this, is, this format is quite used in, academy, in academia. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's quite sad to see. But it's just contained, uh, so we have uh, the relevance. Then we have a query ID that represents the actual query for a particular query in the training set. And then we have just a list of uh, feature ID and the value of the feature. OK? So you give this to, the, to your learning to rank method. There are many. And the learning to rank method will try to learn a model that try to respect the value of the feature, try to predict the, the relevance on the left based on the values on the right. OK? Um, there are many ways to do that. Uh, there are still people inventing new ways to do that. Um, and I'm going to use, show you something, some of these methods. Before we dive into training models and deploy them, uh, let me just show you something in the demo page. So you see, here I have my relevance thing. And on the right, 
I have metrics implemented. So uh, that was what Mike was talking about before. So I have just one method here for now. So it's the default uh, ranking. And I have precision, recall, and have measure. And uh, so you see there is a net after the precision, and I have them twice. So precision at 1. And, and then I have uh, precision at 10, recall at 10, and F measure at 10. Um, and the idea here is that when you, uh, the idea behind at 1 is that instead of just computing the precision, considering all the responses that you get for your query, you just cut the response to the first result, if it's 1, and you compute the precision uh, as if your method was returning only the highest scored result. Okay, and this is uh, a use case that is really important when you are implementing I'm feeling lucky, basically, because what you want is the user to type the query and then you redirect uh, straight to the article. And as you can imagine, if you are implementing the search function of Wikipedia, you really want this. You don't want people to go through the result page and then click on what they want. You want to send them straight to the article that they are looking for. While precision at 10, recall at 10, and F measure at 10 is, um, is the Google page, basically. You want to optimize the, the results page. So you usually have 10 results that the user see. So you really want the top 10 results to be good. You don't care about what the user will see on the second page, because probably it's not going to happen. It will leave the search page, or it will be happy. So as you can see, precision at one, I'm not going to dive into the other measures, but precision at one means basically that only 40% of the results for the query contain something relevant on the first position. So it means that I'm just counting here. So this is good, one. This is bad, one bad. And then I'm doing the ratio. And this is just like, it means that only 40% are good and 60% contain a non-relevant result on the first position. So let's say that we want to do better here. So the first thing that we want to do is train a linear model. OK, I'm fine. Uh, train a linear model. It means that I, it's the most easy thing. So I want something that will uh, take the values of the feature, we combine them as in the, at the beginning, like multiplying them for some magic number, and we return me a score where the higher is the score, the better it is. And um, so, oh, oh. so this will train a model and uh, we'll produce a model file that is just something similar to this. So it's just a magic number that multiplies the value of the feature and then sum to the other magic number that multiplies the value of the feature and so on. And, uh, and this is a linear model. So this produces a linear model, put it in a nice JSON and send it to Solar. And then from now on, I can just call re-ranking, giving the name of the model. And Solar will use this model to rank documents. And as you can see, I get some weights. Uh, usually, you, don't, you should not trust the weights too much. They don't mean much. Like, you can say, like, oh, this got a high weight. It means that it's the most important feature. Uh, but here, we can say something. There are two features that don't have a weight, so they have zero. Basically, we are ignoring these two features. Uh, wiki title score and links length. It means that the model thinks that we don't, you don't you, they are not useful for, for predicting the score. And actually, it makes sense, because wiki title score contains underscore, so it probably never matched the query in my training set. And links length, I don't know how you can use link, links length as a feature. Uh, so now I, I loaded the model into Solar. And I go back here, I refresh. Oh, OK. And you can see there is a new model. If I click on it, yes, I get the new ranking using this model. And it doesn't look really good, yeah. So as you can see, wait, 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 wait. it doesn't look good, but the metrics tells this as well. So it's not just looking at the results. It's really numbers. We have numbers that confirm what we are seeing. So you see precision at one is worse, actually. And uh, yeah, the other numbers doesn't look great, too. And the reason for this is that this is just a linear model. It doesn't have any knowledge of the ranking. It's just considering each document standalone and tries to predict this, the final score out of the feature, so we can do better. There are learning to rank algorithms that look at the whole list. That's why in the training set you put uh, the query ID, and they try to push relevant results on the top. And one of these models is RankClip. 
And it's a model, it's not linear, so it's not like that you can do a combination of scores and you get it. It's something that is more complex and it's based on trees. So you browse through trees using the feature values and at the end you get, a, at the end of the tree you get scores that you combine together. And this particular library, Rankly, allows you to train uh, your model to optimize a particular metric. So in this case, I can tell um, Rankly to optimize, train a model optimizing precision at one. Okay, so oh, I hope it will go fine. So yeah, so I train a model. It did several iterations to try trying to optimize over the training set. Uh, the model, and in the end, he gave up. He said, I think I reached the optimum on this training model, and I got precision at one, 89%. So if I now refresh here, it's in solar, and you can see precision at one is now 89%. If I click here, I can watch the result, and you see now it looks better. Um, so if I go through, you can see that actually many results are green on the top now. So it's pushed relevant stuff on the top, and if we look at the other metrics, we see that now we are really good on precision at one. Recall, that means the number of relevant results on the top increased. Uh, but still, like at 10, we are not looking great. So like the, the full model is still doing better. And we are not improving here. So what we can do, we can try to improve um, NDCG, that is a measure that look really at the ranking. So if you are just looking at precision at 10, you're just computing the ratio between the relevant and the not relevant results. So if you have five relevant results from position five to position 10, your precision is 0 0.5, because half of your results are relevant on the top 10. But if they are on the top, which is better, your precision is still 0 0.5. So you don't really get the difference. And this EG gives you different values. So if they are on the top, you will get NDCG1. If they are on the bottom, you will get, I don't know how much, probably it's 0 0.3 or something like that. So we want to optimize real the ranking and the CG at 10. And now I got NDCG at 10, 0 0.92. So if I refresh here, I get like better, I get precision at 1, 1. It means that all the results on the top are always relevant, you can see. So always green. Not here. Well, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't, didn't press. OK. So back, green, 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 I'm happy. So as you can see now, it's slightly better, but still F measure. Uh, precision is slightly better here. Uh, recall, it's the same, and the F measure that is just the average of the two is still the same. So again, you can do better because there are a certain number of trees that these things use. So we can increase the number of three, and the model will become more specific. So it's bigger now, though, so it will take some time to load. Um, yeah. So if I refresh now. Yeah, so here I get like, now I get F measure 46, so improved, uh, improved precision at 10 by uh, 6%, which is good. Uh, uh, so, sorry, 7%. And, and I'm happy. Uh, so, in real life, if you see precision at 1, uh, it, uh, precision at 1 equals to 1, it means that you have a problem. Because this is something that should never happen. It means that you are God and you predict everything, and uh, in learning to rank it means that you are overfitting the model. That's what I'm doing here, basically. Uh, basically, it's learning for each query what to return, and this will means that it's going to work really well on your training set, but then when real users start to ask different things, you'll probably return crazy things. So what you do in real life is that you don't have a small training set, but you have different uh, query set, and you train on one, and then you evaluate on a different one with different queries. So you're sure that if you have a new query, you're still going good. And I have an example here. So I have uh, the query ROM. Uh, query ROM is not in the training set, so I didn't train on this query. And if I perform the query ROM here, I will get that the first result is a state in, 
in US, that is not really what I would expect to, if I search for Rome. Uh, if I use a model that is uh, NSG at 10 uh, using 1,000 trees, I get that the first result is the city in Italy. And, and then I, I also get like clothing in ancient Rome that still makes sense. So it's actually better than the default also if I didn't train on to optimize this particular query. So yeah, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed the demo. I didn't have errors, I'm happy. And now if you have questions, we are ready to take them. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Can you just talk a little bit about roadmap for learning to rank in terms of adding support for other models and new types of features and things like that? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Grant. Um, so there is this discussion. Like at the moment, uh, when we de when we design the the plugin, uh, we assert that uh, a feature is a float, and you cannot really have different types of feature. And the reason for that is that, like, also the, like the, the, the file that you usually use to train do the same assertion. So a feature is always a float, and models that I usually use assert the same thing. So um, I'm not sure if, like, there's, there is the need to, to use different uh, output, uh, different types for a feature, but I'm totally open to, to discuss this thing. And yeah, so yeah, that's. that's I have I one know. more thing too yeah. though. So right now, the features that you define, it's kind of one-to-one -one with the features you define and the features you extract. But in many instances, maybe you want a single feature function to actually output multiple feature values in one go. Yeah. Uh, right now, the plugin itself uh, doesn't uh, easily support that. It is one-to-one, -one, one feature in, one feature out. Uh, one thing we would definitely like to do, because we use it as well, is maybe we want to find you know, 10 features and it outputs 500 feature values. Um, that would really help in terms of you know, us developers writing this stuff. Uh, it would also help in performance too, so that's a big one too that we really want to do. Um, on top of that, uh, in many instances, you want to train, uh, chain together ranking models. So you have Solar that you know, essentially ranks your first 10,000 documents, and then you use this to re-rank maybe the top 1,000. Right now, it's just a single second pass. It would be nice if then you wanted to do a third pass or a fourth pass on top of the re-ranked 1,000. Maybe you re-re-rank top 10, um, taking you know, image quality or maybe figuring out the prices if that's slow hitting your database. Uh, you don't want to do that for all your documents. So really chaining these together is another thing we would like to do as well. Um, yeah, those are you know, two Still big things. Still a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. If you guys have ideas or you know have a use case, certainly please contribute back. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so one last question. question. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I have two questions. So first, <laughs> uh, how, how we, we can answer questions too afterwards. We'll be around and be outside. Okay. How much effort do you put in generating a gold standard? That is. If you go on your Wikipedia data, you have your queries, so do you really read the first 100 documents and to judge whether they are relevant? Do you look for other documents not in the first 100, which might just be very relevant, but only match because they contain synonyms of your query? So m how much effort do you spend for that? Uh, really, getting your training set, uh, it's like... It's, it's a big effort, right? The, the bigger your training set, the better your model will be. Uh, you use a combination of explicit data. Maybe you have your experts in-house that judge things, right? Maybe you also send stuff outside to the crowd. Uh, maybe you have a bunch of popular documents. Maybe you send that out there, too. It's essentially, you kind of really have to combine everything together to really get a good set of documents that are always on top, documents that are always at the tail end, something in the middle. So that way your model can really pick out the things that are really good about a document and things that are really, really bad and knows to push those down. So really, it's, yeah. it's an ongoing thing. It's never like, here's my training set and I'm done. Uh, you always add to it every single time. And really, like, if you find a query that's bad, you should kind of curate that, add it to your test set or training set. So it's just always ongoing. So it's a big effort. And also, I think how you do that depends really by the use case. So based on which type of service you have, which type of documents, which type of users, you, you want to use different ways to create a training set. Mm. So you still need humans, it's not all automatic. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Cool.
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are really tight on schedule, and as you know, the rooms are quite far from each other. So, uh, so thank you very much, Diego and Michael. Thanks.